I have to ask you about disruptive events. Uh, you know, I'm old enough to be on the planet where the internet came around and it really disrupted a lot of businesses. What do you think about the AI happening? I mean, I use Jasper AI for content to help, but it still needs a lot of massaging. Yeah. When I use it, is that, and I noticed that Microsoft is adding that to all their uh, apps. Yeah. Chat GPT. <laughs> To me, it feels it feels significantly disruptive, and uh, so I uh, don't think that I'm the smartest guy in the room ever. And so I try to learn from people who are smarter than me. And I think when people put it on the scale of the internet itself, and then mobile being a dramatic shift in you know just life and business, and people smarter than me think AI it might provide that sort of shift, um, I believe it. And because I've, I've studied enough to think like, yes, there, there's obvious ways that AI can start to replace human work, even if it's 80% of the human work and you have to step in and clean up 20% of the content. That's still a meaningful shift. And I think all the opportunities, uh, even just embedded in a, in a software product, like, uh, you know, if we can get a really good AI chatbot to answer support requests, well, either we need fewer people doing support or those people can do the harder problems that the bot can't figure out. Like simple examples like that to me. And this is what I, this is what I, what gets me excited about AI is there are simple use cases like that, that a non-technical business person like me can figure out and try to execute on a plan. And in contrast, um, you know, I never bought into, you know, uh, crypto and blockchain and NFTs, I know a lot of people made a lot of money in a hurry on that thing, but to me, it never seemed like it had any like actual long-term useful application, um, which I'm sure there's people listening to this who are like, Kevin, you're an idiot. You're just missing I, I the boat. Know. But I've been saying for a long time, I, I follow what Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett said about crypto and Bitcoin, which is it's trash. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, again, those, those two are smarter than me and like they, they, and it's not because they don't get it. It's not because they're old, well, they which is what the three, four years ago. And look at them. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. They've been proven right. Um, and, you know, there's probably some really cool applications of crypto that do have, you know, some some long term merit. I just think that the, the hype cycle was way out of control on yeah, that a couple of years ago. Uh, the reason I brought up the chat GPT was I, I was having a conversation. I have some students, you know, and, and I, they were looking at this chat application. And I, I said, look. I'm not saying it's a good deal, bad deal right now. I'd have to think about it. But if you have chat GPT coming into here, and this is old code, and they can't add that onto that, this might be a dead product in a year or two. I'm just, I don't know if that's correct, but I just, uh, I, I see yeah. that possibility. Yeah. 100%. I think if you're in the M&A space and you're not adding that to your deal checklist or your diligence checklist, like, and it doesn't have to be the answer, but like, does AI change the trajectory of this business? And the reality is like, you probably don't know the answer to that question with a whole lot of certainty because this is still so new and emerging. But if you're not at least trying to go through the thought exercise of like, okay, what might happen? How might this business be disrupted? What are the opportunities that might be coming from AI or chat GPT or any of the, uh, the other competitors there? Like it needs to be part of your conversation either with your partners or in your own head of like, yeah, yeah. and if, if you're just ignoring it, I think you're, you're, you're doing yourself a disservice. Yeah. And as well in software, there's always these disruptive waves that come in that give your software product a life cycle. I hope this video has inspired you. If you need help buying your first million dollar business, make sure to visit me at dealflowsystem.net. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe down below. Comment on it, share it, tell everyone about it. And thanks for watching.